Hi there, I'm Medico Sil. I'm a final year medical student from Sydney, Australia. In this channel, we talk about all things healthcare and try to make it fun. I hope you enjoy this video. I had to do CPR about 15 times when I was in Tanzania. It is likely that as a healthcare professional, you'll have to do CPR sometime in your career. And if you go to a Tanzanian uh, ED in a small rural town there, you almost certainly will do it, which is what happened to me. So I did my elective placement in Moshi, which is a um, medium sized town uh, near Kilimanjaro in Tanzania. You can actually see the mountain, it's spectacular. I was in the ED there for a month and almost every second day would someone would crash while I was there. I very quickly developed my set of rules for when I'm doing CPR, such as I always take my glasses off before I start because they would always fall on the patient, um, which is the last, you know, you can imagine uh, it just adds to the chaos when there are people trying to manage the airway, you're on the chest um, and you just don't want to drop glasses and a stethoscope um, and try and pick them up and interrupt compressions and that kind of thing. The first time I did CPR, which was on my first day, it was two hours into my first shift. That was probably one of the worst moments of my life. Essentially, it was this 60 year old man who had really bad diarrhea and vomiting. So he's really hypovolemic, low fluid, really dehydrated. And it put him, it tipped him over the edge and put him into um, cardiac arrest and shock. And uh, so we needed to get fluids into him, but they wanted to send him out to x-ray first. So it was, it was coming wheeled back from x-ray and, and the guy who reeled him in um, said he just stopped talking. I was with a patient uh, in one room over and I overheard them saying, uh, oh, should we start CPR? Should we start CPR? By the way, if you're ever having to ask yourself, should you start CPR? You probably should start CPR. CPR was commenced and um, I jumped in as well. Yeah, the worst moment was not doing the CPR, but when the ribs, like his ribs had cracked from previous compressions and having to press on, you know, broken ribs and just feeling that crunch was, it still gives me a very kind of strange, uncomfortable feeling. That being said, I learned a very important lesson uh, during that experience and that is that you do need to press very hard. People generally don't press hard enough when they're doing compressions. Yeah, so what does it look like? Well, it doesn't look like in the movies where they do this. We're losing him, Doc. Oh no. Because what they're doing is this is a real person and they can't break ribs, all right? So they're collapsing their arm. In, in real life, you are going in the middle of the chest, so to, between the nipples, in this bone, the sternum, and you are locking your arms. My whole body weight's on top of them, and I need to go one third the depth of the chest. If I'm not one third down, I'm not going deep enough, okay? You need to collapse the heart and let it refill. Collapse the heart, let it refill. So I'm, boom. Five, six, seven, eight. You can sing a song to help you. Oh, 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 oh. Staying alive, staying alive. People who have done uh, first aid know that there's the doctor's ABCD, you check for danger, you make sure they have a response, you send for help, um, you check the airway is clear, you feel for breathing and then you jump on the chest. So you have to do a lot before you jump on the chest and you should do the training courses to upskill in that uh, appropriately. But I'm just saying, people do not press hard enough. The reason I'm showing this video is because I just saw my first um, code blue in Australia. Now, Code Blue is, uh, you know, someone who's going into cardiac arrest, who's really shocked. Basically, it's a medical emergency. You need to go in there with a lot of staff and um, basically save the person's life because they are past the cliff edge and they're going down. And it was really interesting to see how Australia handles Code Blues compared to, um, you know, a resource poor setting such as uh, in the Tanzanian ED. So obviously with limited resource and staff, in Tanzania, it was chaotic um, and the defibrillator pads didn't work, the bag mask ventilation had holes in it, the training was not so good. Um, you know, I saw nurses putting the, the kind of airway masks on the wrong way, incorrect medication dosing I saw a couple times in uh, Tanzania, and essentially just not having enough doctors there to run the response. 
Whereas the code blue I saw in Australia was really good. Um, essentially, they press the emergency button on the wall, so they have the infrastructure to send the alarm. Um, within a few seconds, you have doctors and nurses there without needing to delegate too many tasks. There'll be someone managing the airway, someone repositioning the table, one person on each arm putting IVs in to get access, and someone else taking a history. Uh, and another nurse was on the phone organizing ED. The crazy thing about this code blue was that actually the person who unfortunately got really sick uh, was a visitor, right? So I'm in aged care and he was visiting his mum who was a patient and she's about 100 and she's in the end of life care pathway and going for palliative care. But he is about 82, okay? So he's, he's also aged care. So he got really sick. They managed it well, and he went to ED, and then, then he had to get readmitted to aged care. So he's coming up to the same ward his mum is unfortunately dying in. Now here is the strained question, and I don't know what they decided to do, but what would you do? If you were in his situation, would you want to get put in the same room as your mum? Because on one hand, you know, she's at the end of her life, you want to be there with her. But on the other hand, you're really sick uh, and you'll be getting changed and, um, you know, maybe you just want to have some space. I don't know. It's a very strange situation. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Please like and subscribe. I'm happy to wait. You done? Good. I know you didn't, but you should. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.